There's a small detail in Luke's story of the Nativity that we sort of skip over because we want to get to the part of the story about the inn and the manger and the angels and the shepherds. It's the part about why Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem in the first place. You wouldn't think that Mary would want to travel 150 kilometers when she knew the baby was just about to come. But the people in power had decided that everyone had to be counted. And that meant everyone had to go back to the place that they were from. Everyone had to go home. Now we could stop here and talk about how people in authority are often unjust, or the way that people in power have often oppressed the powerless. But what I, what I really want to ask about this is just this simple question. If suddenly we were all told we had to go home, where would you go? Where's home for you? Millions of people across the whole world right now are trying to get home for the holidays, whatever that means to them. It's something that lives deep in each of us, our sense of where home is. And, and when we lose it, for whatever reason, what we feel is homeless. There's a paradox at the heart of that little family in Bethlehem. Like so many other paradoxes of our faith, they're told that they must go home. And that's why they've made the four day long journey on foot or maybe on the back of a donkey to Jerusalem. But when they arrive there and when the time comes for the child to be delivered, Jesus is born literally homeless. Jesus begins his life by entering directly into the homelessness we have all felt at one time or another, and maybe our feeling now. Maybe you're one of those millions of people just trying to get home in the next few days, to be wherever you have found the love you most can trust. Or maybe, as you listen to this, you are one of the 150 million people on the earth today who have been forced from your home by war or violence or corruption or by changes in the earth's climate that have made your home unlivable. Jesus is born into just that circumstance, homeless. His parents have had to come home only to find themselves homeless there too. And soon, as the story tells us, they will be refugees, desperately fleeing the possibility of violence where they thought home was. It's because of this that the church gives so much of its work and its care to the homeless and to refugees. It's because of this that the church speaks clearly and passionately against policies that treat refugees as though they were criminals or denies them even the possibility to plea for asylum, for mercy, when they come finally to a safe place. Despite the way his life began, Jesus taught that the only way we ought to treat each other is by loving each other as we have been loved by God. And that is why the church makes a home for those who are homeless. It makes a home for those who have had to flee their homes. And that's why on Christmas, the church will make a home for you too. For all of us who sense that in the end, our home is with the God of love that the place where we will finally be able to rest and find welcome is with the one who said, come to me and I will give you rest. May this Christmas find you at home in the places where you find the acceptance, the forgiveness, the joy that is the gift of the child born homeless, Christ the Lord. Thank you.